I don't know how she tones it down because we really drink on this show. We really do. We really get this fucked up. This isn't just uh, juice. And right? every time, look, let me tell you. So, just to let y'all in, we film every Friday, right? Yes. We film and every Friday, when we film, <laughs> we say we're not going to get drunk like that. I ain't drinking like that. Especially Brittany. I'm not drinking like that tonight. I said that today. I'm oh. not drinking like that. In her Minnie Mouse voice. I'm not drinking like that. I'm not drinking like that tonight. And I'm then she gets here and pours half the bottle in our cups. <laughs> Like, you know, fuck it. I'm already here. Let's just get drunk. I wanted to make the drinks on camera with y'all tonight. I wanted to show you the old recipe. You know what I'm saying? Mix it up. Pour the ice. You know what I'm saying? Get it correct. Not me. I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's, Let's get, get fucked it. up. <laughs> Jean, you tap the bottle. I didn't tap the bottle. No, you did. You're disrespectful. You don't tap the bottle. So. Disrespectful. I'll drink to that. Hey. All right. Hey. So, um, cheers. Let's uh, go ahead and take a quick break. We'll be right back at you with Talking Toasted. All right, so um, we can start the interview with Rocky, hey, cool. our psychic palm reading friend, friend to the show. That's what, we, that's what Wendy Williams <laughs> <what Winnie> Will <laughs> calls her people, friends to the show. But um, in the meantime, in the between time, we're going to interview Rocky and get, we're going to find a little bit more about him first before he gets a little more into us. Uh, and tell me finding out about you guys. Yeah, that's kind of creepy. Mm -hmm. So, you, do you know everything we're about to ask you? No, there's different types of psychics, and so I'm not that kind of psychic where I know everything about what you're thinking. Okay, I'm hoping you don't know about what I'm thinking. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> 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 so, you, just, you can just read our palm, right? Like, it's not like you can read our minds. Just... Well, for you, Brandy, I don't need to read your mind to know what you're <laughs> thinking. <laughs> It's always dirty. I can read your mind, babe. I know. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> mm. Okay. So what do you... You like to drink? She really likes to drink. She's, she was tired of tequila. That's what it was. All right. So what do you read? You read energy? You read... Well, it's a little interesting because... Um, if you guys ever see like those just the stereotypical psychic, they have like the crystal ball or something like that. So that's just a tool that they use to help look inside the person. However, for me, I do palm reading, which helps. Which the palm is kind of like my medium, my tool to look inside another person. I don't quite need it, but it helps me to focus. And so using that, I can look into another person. I can see your energy, and I can see your 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 aura. And with that as well. When I use your palms, then it helps me to see any kind of details and get any kind of visions and information I need from the person. And I've kind of been doing it for a while. So with any kind of mature psychic, they get to this point where they have to turn it off because sometimes it's just too much information. So now it's kind of good to have the palms there so I can focus in again. Because other time, most times, I, I just have it off because I don't want to be hearing or seeing things from people 24-7. <coughs> and that's actually something really interesting with most people. Because I see a lot of young people now coming into the psychic world, but the world doesn't really know what to do with them anymore. So people don't know what's happening with all these energies. And so I see a lot of depressed people, a lot of angry people, because they're getting, they're feeding the energy off of others. So they're not really sad, they're not really depressed. But they don't know how to shut off the receptors, okay. and they're getting it from everybody else all the time. So. That's so me. Oh my God, he's saying like me. Like... I don't know how to stop embracing everybody else's feelings. When I get around people who are depressed or angry, it just happens, and I'm just like, oh. "Is that why I hate people?" <laughs> that could be it too. <laughs> Maybe you just sense them. You're like, "Ah, oh, this person sucks. I don't." Like that. <laughs> as soon as they come around, I'm I, just feel, like, I feel, I feel bad energy. I feel energy. the energy. I'm I feel, like, oh. I feel good energy. I feel bad energy. I feel indifferent energy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> No, that's why you gotta learn how to start shutting it off and shutting people out too. Yeah. So, is, do you think that this is an ability that that anyone can tap into, or this is just a god sent ability? You know, or is, I'm, what do you think it comes from? Well, when people ask me about your abilities and everybody's natural gift, I can't explain like basketball. Everybody can play basketball, but there are some people like Shaq who is just he's gonna be gifted. And he's gonna be like prior. born for it. Right. Exactly. So most people can tap into it somewhat, but there's more people that are, you're going to be the professional, you're going to want to watch this guy. So like even you today, how you're describing, how you can sense people's energies, mm -hmm. almost everybody can tap into that too. And so I'm interested to read your palms in a bit to see if you have your own talents and gifts too. Ooh, I can't wait to read mine. I feel like I'm real special. Sure. <laughs> you, you are special. Ah. You 
my special friend. Yeah. yeah. He uh, uh, <laughs> the short bus special. The disrespect. <laughs> you disrespect. You know. So anyway, okay. So when did you realize that you had a gift? Well, the funny thing is, growing up, I had it as a kid. So growing up, you kind of just thought it was normal, and everybody else was doing it. And everybody else was just too scared to talk about it, like how you were. So you kind of just grow up thinking, I'm not going to talk about it because everybody else isn't talking about it. Until you reach an age where you finally start asking people and you're like, oh wait, am I crazy? Because yeah. nobody else thinks this way. Nobody else feels this way. So the very first time though that I can definitely remember something weird happening was maybe when I was like three years old. Where I actually started seeing uh, spirits themselves and hearing weird things. But, you know, as a three-year-old, you're always afraid of, like, monsters under your bed, and everybody tells you it's your imagination. You were three? Yeah. Lord. So I thought that they were right, but then those monsters under the bed never quite went away, and then other people started confirming them too. So then, I realized I'm not crazy. So when people start to confirm it, who, who confirmed it for you? Well, see, the thing is, my family, uh, we come from <coughs> Laos and Thailand. And so over there in like more of the jungle area of Asia, or actually just pretty much anywhere outside of the United States, people believe more in animal, uh, well, in more shamanism and more spirituality. And so it's a little bit more animalistic. And my whole family comes from there. My grandparents just came from there. My parents came from there. So I'm the first generation born American. And so everybody believes that more. And I feel like I got that a lot from my grandparents, especially from my grandma. Her side of the family was actually really well known for shamanism, and she was considered sort of a princess or semi royalty of the shaman world. Yeah. Yeah. So, shamanism, can you give us a little more information about that? Yes, yeah, so shamanism is the belief that spirits are always around us and that we're always constantly interacting with them, and that they affect, like, they affect you in some kind of way and all the time. So, if you're ever feeling sick, or if you're ever having like a random string of bad luck, it's a good probability that there's a bad spirit around you causing things to happen or they've afflicted you in some kind of way with their negative energy so then you call the actual shaman over and they're kind of like the spiritual doctor who can come and heal you or speak to the spirits to ask them how come you're afflicting uh, Itachi this way what are you doing what do you want and it could just be that maybe you, uh, you didn't know it but uh, for instance there's a crayfish, right? Or maybe you happen to step on a crayfish or step on a worm, and that just happened to be, you know, uh, a spirit that was here in physical form. Well, we can go talk to him, we can go apologize and say, hey, you know, he didn't mean to do that. Please stop making his life horrible. Or, That's why bad stuff be happening to me. I stay killing bugs. <laughs> so it's spirits and bugs. <laughs> Everything. Okay. They're in every living creature. They're everything awesome. that has a vessel? Everything that has a vessel. See? So they got somebody in them. They either have somebody in them or just affecting them in some kind of way. So it's not like full on possession. So it's like people, it's like if I was to play with a toy, some spirits play with bugs. Yeah, kind of like that too. And make them do things. Or it's like. You play a house? <laughs> I'm trying to get to the bottom of both. Well, it's more like why are they here? It's more like whenever you come down, to, whenever you come to Earth, you can choose the type of life you want. Ooh. And so, a so an thing. animal. Yeah. So a lot of times it's like, what's better to learn compassion and loyalty than to be a dog? So I'm gonna come back down to Earth just to experience being happy every single day. All dogs ain't loyal, bro. What? Well, all, all pet dogs get free food every day. But you know why all dogs ain't loyal. Some of them no, cause all these hoes ain't loyal. <laughs> and some of them hoes are spirits. And some of these hoes are dogs. <laughs> <laughs> right, and some of them dogs are spirits. So some of them dogs are hoes. Damn, it's just a cycle. Yeah, there's, there's hoes everywhere that ain't loyal. Okay, so I guess we're getting off topic. Yes. Okay, so um, let's get back to the spirits. Um, so your family, so you were kind of, it. did you find some type of, uh, I guess, did you, did you have a conversation with your parents? Did you, I mean, how did that process go and how did you start to hone in on your gift or your skills or whatever? Like, well, 
yeah. not to get too derailed, but um, my parents' generation is kind of like in a bit of limbo where they start trying to find themselves. But my grandparents' generation, and they were much more in tune with it. And so as soon as you speak to them about it, they're like, we know exactly what you're talking about. And this is actually what's happening. This is what's going on. This is what you're seeing. And they can explain a lot better what's going on. So my visions, my dreams, the things I was seeing in real life, in real time too, they were able to confirm it. And then they were able to actually help me take that a step further to pass what I was seeing myself and explain to me how I can start to uh, hone in on what's actually going on. And so I guess an example would be, I kept on seeing the spirit in my room. And it kept on just running around looking for me. And I told my grandma about it. And she put this, she took my necklace and she went over this fire and she put it through the fire. And she said this whole entire chant. And my, gra my grandma, right, she doesn't even speak English. But when she went into this trance, she started speaking five, six, seven different languages. Because at the time I was taking Japanese. So she was speaking English really fluently. She was speaking Japanese fluently. And she was speaking our language fluently. I was like, I know grandma doesn't know how to, how to speak this language because they're from the jungles with like kind of a third world kind of thing going on where they have no access to outside information but she's speaking multiple languages fluently That's this crazy. Point. And so when she put that, that spell on my necklace, the next day I see that spirit and it's running around trying to find me and they can't find me. Most of the times it's like sitting in my bed just like staring at me. So that's how I know. Why was the spirit looking for you? Well, that gets a little deep. But the more kind of aware you get, the more they kind of become aware of you. Is that spirit here right now? No. Okay. Don't worry. That's all. That's all I want to know. <laughs> and we'll be right back with Talking Toasted. Hey. Drink with me. <laughs> drink with us. The psychic is drinking, and he's going to be you know, <laughs> drinking and reading. <laughs> We're back on Talking Toasted. What's up? It's Daytachi. We're not on commercials. Just start. It's just fun to do it. God damn it. All right, Rocky. <laughs> so tell us a little bit. So do do you so you share this gift with with a lot of people you know? Do you tell people now? Do you hide it? What what do you do? Well, see the thing is here in America, almost everybody is Christian. And they view anything that's not Christian as I'm glad he's touching on evil, that. as evil or like the work of the devil. I'll drink to that. Witches. Yeah, so it's very stereotyped and it's very biased against anything else. So for the most part, I kind of avoid openly just like spewing it out to everybody. However, you can kind of tell who needs help and who doesn't. And so if it's a very extreme case, I would go to. Are you need help? No, you guys are cool. <laughs> no, because I know you guys are speaking to the spirits every weekend. Oh, he's right. <laughs> you guys are talking every weekend. Talking to us, they were spiriting. Okay. All right, but so there are cases where I'll come up to a person, and if their spirits are really speaking to me, I'm like, this might sound crazy, but I need to tell you this. But for the most part, I just have my website and I have my services, and if people seek, then they will find. But for the most part. I don't typically go out to people and just um, become a soapbox preacher and <laughs> just shout at people and tell them that they need something here and there. And there. It's, it's not quite like that in more spiritual world. So what do you think your, your gift comes from? Uh, well, the strange thing is that, like I was saying earlier, I believe that the whole world is coming to a new awakening and that the spirits that are coming into the existence now because it's like we're we were all spirits in heaven or on the other side and everybody that was a spirit back then was kind of more of a higher ranking spirit and so everybody coming down to earth now is starting to come and have that ability now of those higher ranking spirits I feel that. and yeah so that's why you start seeing like kind of a change in the world where people are becoming more open to spirituality more into psychedelics more into intuitiveness and that also i want to point out too is why people are becoming a little bit more depressed is because they are born a more powerful spirit, and they can feel. They can have more abilities. They feel other people. They feel more energies. But the world is kind of in this messed up state because the previous people, generations before, weren't as on a high vibration, and they kind of ruined the earth. So now we're kind of inheriting this ruined earth, 
and we are on a higher vibration, so we can feel the pains of the world. We can feel every kind of bad thing that's been going on, and it's up to us now to start realizing how to use our own gifts. Well, how, like how you're saying, how you feel a lot of negativity with people, you have to learn how to shut that off and to use the goodness of the world and keep out the badness so that we can start changing the world so that there's only good here instead of all the waste and all the, the sewage and garbage that we're dumping into the oceans, all the waste of energy trying to become more green. Once that happens, then the natural tendency for people will be to tune into the earth and the earth will have good energy to give right. back to us. Don't be looking around like that while he's talking about <laughs> stuff like, like this. His glasses are like green. Okay. So like it's freaking me out. So like it's I can look at the light, but like when I look Jesus. at are my eyes green? <laughs> no, it's anti -glare. Exactly. <laughs> it's freaking me out. So I'm just like I was engaged. I and, was too. Okay, <laughs> so you are really I'm, I'm a drink to that because you you preach it tonight. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I I, so I can understand. Oh, oh, what he's out. <laughs> we gotta go on break because he's out of liquor. We gotta fill him up. Hold we on. We gotta fill him up. Good night. <laughs> One. And we're back with talking those it. Yeah. And we are having such a great episode. Yeah. Oh yeah, we gotta drink to that. I said we gotta drink every time we say talking those it. Cheers. All right. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. This is definitely a lot more liquor this time. I I put less. I didn't put that he much. He made his drink like he was making his own. I right. didn't. I tried to make it. I want him to have. I want to have a sound. Stay focused. <laughs> focused reading. I don't want him to be just blasting, telling me about things I don't want to know. So like, do you get like an energy from me? Like other than just like honestly. Let me check that. Like, I see a hair. Yeah, that, that's an energy right there, right there. <laughs> so the interesting thing is, uh, more intuitive or psychic people can always pick up a good vibe from other psychic people. So if you ever feel like you are just attracted friendship-wise to somebody, it might be that you guys are on the same vibration or frequency as one another, and that's why you can look at somebody and just instantly become friends with them too. So I always notice that oftentimes, I don't even need to talk about it with somebody, but then I just become friends with them and all of a sudden, boom. We get into the conversation and they have these stories, they have these stories, and these stories, and then they have these backgrounds. Like uh, one of my friends, his name is Zach. And so we never talked about it, but all of a sudden, one day after hanging out, I find out that his family, they actually have a very strong spiritual belief and he has a very strong uh, gypsy background. So they do a lot of different kind of <coughs> magic and abilities with that right, too. So I started talking to him all about ours. And it's crazy how people from different parts of the worlds can share very similar beliefs. So, um, to get to your question, oh. yes, I do. <laughs> I'm so into it. I'm like, uh. So you know, some, some who can Wait, take it. Wait, he's gonna answer my question. What he's saying that he does. He knows. He knew you could take it. Oh, I thought he was at, elaborating on that, but you started. Okay. Talking, okay. So okay. I just okay. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, continue. <laughs> Shut <laughs> me up. My well, bad. well, Brandy, the actual interesting thing was. <laughs> As soon as I met you, I don't know if you remember this, but as soon as I heard you speaking, I was like, this girl has something going for her, and I wanted to get to know you more. And I think that the reason why... I was we... it that sex appeal? <laughs> well, actually, I was like, uh, <laughs> we met at work, and so for a training, I sat in the front row, so I could see you. Yeah, you could see me. But as soon as she started talking, I could feel, like, your energy. I could feel that you yeah, have... Her voice is so soft, but it roars so loud. It's, it's got a soft texture to it, a tone that's just like... <laughs> the gates of just opened up. Right? Yeah, right there. I got some <laughs> What I got? You gonna help me out? You good. Okay, I'm good. Alright, thank you. Thank so, you. Can we go back to what you were saying about spirits coming down here and yeah. help and being in tune and in touch with what needs to be done? What? Oh. Yes. So, I'll drink that. In many other religions and cultures, it's uh they believe in multiple deities, multiple spirits, multiple gods, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, I find it kind of strange when you get here that everybody believes in one. However, in the Christian belief, they kind of get to it by, well, get around it by claiming that there's angels, guardian spirits. And I think that those are pretty much the same uh, things that they're hinting to. It's just that instead of giving them names, it's just guardian spirits, guardian angels. Well, the thing is, I think that a lot of those guardian angels and spirits and other ancient demigods and gods 
are actually becoming born now and coming into this world because the world is actually getting tough. Is that why Beyonce is... So, there you go. <laughs> Wait, so I have a question. This might Wait. be going off subject. Okay. Well, I'm because gonna, I'm finish it. Okay. I know, but like, I have a question. Okay, okay. <laughs> you gonna remember so, what you were saying though, right? I remember. You ain't that drunk. No, no, no. Okay, okay so... <laughs> Why, he I consumes a lot of spirits. <laughs> yeah, a lot of spirits. <laughs> but I'm just curious, like, when people get in their different moods, like when they're depressed or <laughs> sad or angry, could that be different spirits? Oh, yeah, spirits? definitely. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Like, what? So, anytime you kind of see, like, a uh, kind of like a scary movie, right? It's typically, like, a horrible thing to happen to that spirit. Well, that's. Movies aren't exactly 100% true, but. The one thing that they do have that's correct is that oftentimes the reason why a spirit stays behind is because it has some kind of emotional attachment here. So oftentimes it's an extreme sadness and that's why they take their own lives and that's why they're still here. So some people, they feel that sadness because there could be a potential spirit around them that's sad. And our people that are coming into being born now, the next generation, they can feel so well. They're very, very talented. but. They have no concept of what this gift is. So they're feeling energies, they're feeling sadness from spirits around them, and they think that it's their own. So they're taking medication, they're taking drugs, they're taking like so therapy. No. I get drunk and smoke weed to like, because I don't understand. You can't deal, baby. <laughs> My poor child. That's crazy. I'm starting okay. to understand yeah. now. This is making sense. He's explaining okay. it. It's like, okay, I'm seeing it now. I know yeah. when I go home and I feel this shit, I'm going to be good because I know it's not me. It's the spirit. It's you. It's you, dog. It's the spirit. That's one of the reasons why I started doing my business is because I want to help teach people and help them too. Okay. Because I feel like... So I, you... I was going to ask you that. Yeah. So do you feel like... Because I feel like there's a little bit more of an opening for people like you. Okay. Yeah. These days. You know, I feel like people are looking Look, for yeah. answers and 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 guidance in other ways and other other avenues other than religion necessarily, more like spirituality, less from Christianity or most. You know what I'm saying? I just feel like people are looking for other. They're trying answers. to find themselves. They're trying to figure out like more in tune with themselves. They're not really in tune with. So, do you feel like? Religion. The the there's a change and a shift or something that's allowing people like you you people. <laughs> so <laughs> what do you mean you? People? That's really rude. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I'm black, so I can say. <laughs> well, I definitely feel that the world is opening up to us more. Mm -hmm. oh, I appreciate that comment. Just... So nigga. Oh. <laughs> Don't say that. Uh, don't say that. We have this thing over. every episode where she says, "Don't say, nigga." I don't know where. Don't it say from. it. Well, it's I, not okay. okay. Don't say it. He anyway, say it. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> <shut the face. laughs> Asians, I don't even think. We, Asians, we call it ninja. Okay. Oh, okay. That's a got real slick. Right. <laughs> you love your clothes, but I was just saying. So, okay, go, go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> uh, so, the very interesting thing to get back to your question about. Uh, the different types of people was that in the early 1900s, we the U.S. was actually getting very spiritual. It was actually opening up into a very like a scientific viewpoint and approach and opening more into spirituality. However, World War II happened, and so everybody went from being able to explore spirituality to back to the logical, back to the physical, and like getting into this war, defeating the other guys. We've just now slowly started to get back into this point where there's a lot of uh, openness and, attun uh, and uh, attunement to it. Like uh, one person that I've been following a lot, he's a YouTube star, his name is called Elliot Hulse. And so if you follow his early videos, he's always like so strong, so positive, so male energy and dominant. But if you watch more of his stuff now, he's getting into a lot more philosophical, a lot more theory, a lot more spiritual. Work. And it's very interesting to see somebody who's almost like Dwayne Johnson, the rock kind of mentality, like very, very alpha male. And then he's starting to open more up too. But it's not like a complete like pushover that everybody always thinks that the spiritual world is. It's no. You're still very strong and firm, but you don't have to be aggressive. You don't have to be dominant or fighting people all the time. You just have to be. Exactly. Strength yeah. comes. It's like Bruce Lee. Be like water because strength is not just the force to attack. 
It's the force to be, it's the force to fall, it's the force to dance. There you go. Drink to that. I'll drink to that. Cheers. And, um, and I'll, I'll, I can ask some questions all day. We're going to take a break, but after this break, we're going to get to the palm reading, I guess. Yeah. Because I can talk to him all day. One He's so I, engaging. One thing I just wanted to add was back, wow. back to your <laughs> question. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Back to your question you guys are asking about well, why people are so in tune now. It's because people are not being born at, um, as those powerful spirits because the world is reaching its maximum capacity for our human population. So we're not even supposed to have this many people here, but we keep procre uh, procreating. Keep fucking. Exactly. That's why I can't have kids. There's too many of y'all. Right. And so everybody has a soul, everybody has a spirit. And those things are finite. So that's why more people are being born powerful because we keep summoning them down here and then the body has to have a spirit. <laughs> So there's multiple spirits in me? No, there's... Oh, I thought you were about to say how many hella spirits in me and that's why I'm getting more powerful, like what? No, it's, <laughs> it's just every baby needs a spirit. So then we keep drawing the more powerful ones. Because like, we ran out of the normal ones. So now we're drawing the powerful ones down here. So, oh shit, we gotta ask more questions. I just gotta, t I gotta touch on a few more things and then we'll get to the poverty. Please, this could be a longer <laughs> episode, go, okay? Go. We'll be right back. I'm with our Arnold Ramenegers on Talking Toasted hey. with Rocky. Hey, Mr. Gang. Rocky's on the Ramenegger. so dumb they don't just get it like stop sucking at yeah. life and just have sucking <laughs> oh. all right let's get back on track i'm sorry okay. go ahead go ahead and so yes reincarnation is definitely real and we each come down to earth for a specific reason and a lot of people the more adamant that they are against something that's probably the reason for coming down to earth is to learn to be more open to that or to exist as that like jerk for some reason so with when it comes to spirituality, and I know this is not like religion, mm -hmm. um, they also believe in heaven and hell? Well, we don't term it exactly the same as heaven and hell. There's not like a punishment and a reward. I don't think there's a hell. Yeah, it's more like just if you, it's kind of like hell is being born as the jerk. Because every day of your life, you're going to be your own jailer. You're so gonna we're in free. hell? Sort of. Okay. Earth is, like I was saying earlier, how everybody feels so depressed and angry and all because we've been doing bad things to the earth bad. and so it's like the earth is a battery what we've been storing things to deserve this life right we i did. just didn't have it why did i come here but i'm not so somebody's in me right now i have a spirit in me <laughs> uh, even. i feel it no it's, i'm good okay i'm sorry nice. i didn't mean to say that so um okay so <laughs> so basically it's like you didn't do anything but you're absorbing the energies from the earth and the earth is just 
hadn't, hasn't had a lot of guidance for goodness, and so that's why a lot of people are absorbing all the bad things. So Earth is is Earth worth saving? And can Earth be saved? <laughs> yes, it's definitely worth saving. It's pretty much our main objective at every lifetime is that we are going every time we turn to spirit and go back to the spirit world. It's like we recharge and then remember how amazing, beautiful the other spiritual was. We try to bring that back down. Kind of like emptying out a bucket of water from a sinking boat. So, so Earth is fucked up, and we come wait, back here. Wait, so Earth is a spirit? Earth? Is Earth a space? Earth is like this Arnold Palmer drink. Mm, that's a good Earth. So, so, sometimes there's too much alcohol, and everybody is way too drunk and crazy. So sometimes you have to add more tea to it, or depending on what you have, you like more. If you like more alcohol, then sometimes you have to add more alcohol. I prefer more alcohol. But either way, it's the difference is that the balance is incorrect. So the goodness is heaven, and we have to come and make the balance of the. So do we do that on other planets? Other planets? Is there other planets? Do you believe that there's other planets? Do we care about them? That gets a little bit more complicated. I don't know about extraterrestrial beings, but I know that some of life actually didn't originate here on Earth, and actually some of it came from somewhere else. So basically, we don't give a shit about other planets. Not right now. Earth is in trouble and we're here to fix it. We're here for Earth right now, in this lifetime. Okay. Like the honor poem drink. So yeah. cheers, guys. So is there ever going to be a point where people are existing on a planet and they know who they are, they know where they come from, and they know, is there ever going to be real knowledge and not fake news? Tradition. Well, the funny thing is, you know I'm asking you. I, I, I'll go ahead, man. I'm sorry. You know what's real and what's fake. Otherwise, we wouldn't, we wouldn't even be able to coin fake news as fake. We would just be like, everything is true. I'm just gonna stare. But humans, we actually have this connection to one another. Like birds that fly in a flock, they always know how to fly together in the perfect so formation. Yeah. It's real. And so, exactly, we, we all recognize it's real. We understand each other on a deeper method. Like you know when someone is lying to you. They don't have to tell you. By the way, I was lying. You kind of know. Yeah, that's why I hate fucking liars. It's not always. Hey, and I like what you were saying earlier about how you know sometimes who you don't like. It's because we have this other form of sense, of sensation to know without having to discuss. So if if we deeply inside of us know better, than, if we deeply know better, then why? why don't we do better? If you knew better, you knew better. So why not? Yeah. That makes sense. Well, you tell me. Why don't we do better? I'm trying to figure out because I can't Temptation. say it, motherfuckers. Temptation. <laughs> exactly. Just imagine. We're in hell. There's it's hell. hell. This is temptation. I'm in hell. This is hell. That's exactly why. Yeah. It's because the ones. What that, I do? The ones that see. You're not punishing. You're here to fix it. You're exactly. A helper. I don't want to. I ain't. I ain't want to tip for that shit. I don't yes, remember that. Yes, you are. That's why you're here. That's why you're here. Mm -hmm. You know. You that. just gotta tap into it. Mm -hmm. You just told me that you knew who the people are. There. I'm gonna tap into my veins. No, it's like, it's just a joke. I'm just joking. You better stop. Okay, okay. complete joke. Right now, this is talking toast. All right, because <laughs> we're talking toast. All right. I, I yeah. feel like you were gonna say something. To me. I feel like it's time to get into the palm readings, but I need to know what you were about to say. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off with talking about suicide. Oh my god! I'm not suicidal. It was Do a joke. Do you remember what you were saying? Cause I don't. <laughs> it's alright. So he's a psychic. You remember? So basically, the thing is, oh, we are very young. I'm just like, go ahead. We're very young in this world right now. So it's okay not to know how to help the world, like how you were saying. There's a lot of bad people that you don't like, and I asked you how can you change it. You said you don't know, and it's okay. But the more that we do grow, the more we have to learn how to help those people not to be so angry, so sad, so uh, unpleasant. And so part of this world is to learn how to live this life while not taking their abuse, but learning how to help transform them uh, one step at a time. So with that, do the people that we interact with here really matter? Or oh, I have a question. That was so, oh. Well, just to piggyback off this question, like, because you say that everybody has like a spirit in them. When I touch certain people, do I, can, do I embrace that? Am I going to give a shit about Brittany? I die. Like, if I'm touching him right now and he had like a little bad spirit in him, 
Is that the same as, as, as energy? Like if I'm like embracing some energy? Don't touch me. Does that make sense? Many times, the life that you're born into, the people that you become best friends with and family with, are actually soulmates that you get to see over and over in many lifetimes. So the closer you are to somebody, it's actually because you guys were best friends before. You were my best friend. Shut so up. that's why people are met in my path. I'm crying. That's why I meet I certain people. Like, you was like, always my nigga, bruh. Ah! And hey, we'll be right back with Tommy Tosin. <laughs> oh once we God. fill up our drinks. You was always there. You my nigga. For real. You my. Are oh, we ain't supposed to say nigga? Oh. Uh, Better that. Don't say nigga. I'm sorry. Or ninja. You have been here. Back with Talking Toasted. Hey. Talking Toasted. It's and we... not a commercial. Look, look. Uh, we just pick up where we left off, anyways. Bruh, but we got we got full drink. All right, let's go. So we're about to do our pump ready. Okay. I'm gonna go first. Let me drink first. Okay. The truth is gonna do my past and my future. So where do you want to start? Okay, so Brandy. Uh, I do it a little differently from most other a people. A taste for A taste for So I do it a little different from other people where instead of just the palms, I also do the back side of your hands too. And the back side is more intuitive. The veins. There you go. It's more intuitive and it has to do more for your energy. So if I can, can you please place both of your hands palm down on this table? Okay. So, you see, uh, you have to ask them, are they right hand or left hand? So are you right hand or left hand? I'm right hand. So your dominant hand is always your present and future. Your non-dominant hand is your past. So that means that right now, Brittany's left hand right here is the past, and the one on the right is the future. So do left-handed people live in the past? Nope. Because so so left-handed people, their dominant hand is their left hand. <laughs> I'm just so that's their I, I get it. I get it. I just, <laughs> people I just like to talk toasted. <laughs> <laughs> Let's read this poem in this black hand. But try not to move your hands uh, once you place them down, okay? So it's important too. So right now what's going on is that you can tell by how the thumbs are very close to one another that it means that although Brittany is a very independent type of person, she still holds the people that are close to her very close because the thumbs indicate relationships and uh, how, you're, how you react to the people that you consider family. Your family doesn't always have to be blood relatives, it can be your friends too. So you can see that Although they have a lot of space in between them, that they're pointing at each other, meaning that they're at least thinking about one another. They're not tied at the hips, meaning that I always have to call this person. I always have to be with this person. We have to go out every single day. But you at least think about them. And if you see something that, oh, you know, maybe uh, Itachi will like this. And maybe I will get it for him. Yeah, I'll buy this for him. That's me. I'm always thinking about somebody else when I'm out. That's crazy. Right. And also, you have this space for your own independency. And they have that space from you too, for your own independency. But if it was touching, that means that it's not a bad thing. It just means that you really desire that really intimate relationship, that really closeness with somebody. So your friend, your <coughs> circle of friends might be smaller, but as you can see from Brittany here, her circle of friends, she can have uh, just acquaintances, and she can also have really close friends too. And also going into her palms, you can see here that with spacing of her fingers. Each finger represents a different aspect of personality and a different aspect of talent and of blessing somebody. So with the way that her fingers are spaced, she's a very great communicator. In the past, you were very open to communicate with a lot of people, but the thing is, you can tell by how the pinky is uh, angled. It means that a lot of the things she was saying a lot of people don't understand exactly what she was actually talking about. I don't understand shit she talked about. <laughs> but she has a natural talent for communication anyway. So it's kind of like a, it can be potentially like a natural game. talent for communication or manipulation. There you go. So with that, she actually has been closing off a little bit more communication and focusing in a little bit more because you can see that the pinky is a little far away. Mm -hmm. Love, she has a natural, uh, or a normal talent for love, meaning that she's not closed off, but she's not lovesick or love stricken and needing that love all the time. 
And the funny thing is, it actually looks like your communication was the most awful one of all, of all of them, but you've been reducing the amount of things you say, but increasing in the understanding of all of that. Mm -hmm. all right. Oh my god, this is freaky! <laughs> this is so weird! Okay, go! <laughs> So the thing is too, uh, another thing that I wanted just to let you know is that your past, and I don't mean this in a bad way, anytime that something doesn't sound too good, it's just you take it as a lesson and yeah. you take it as a pivotal point. Your life is becoming actually a little bit more unstable, the more and more order you get. And a lot of it is due to different aspects of your life that have been unbalanced. It's like uh, building a Jenga piece and the bottom of the pyramid is, is unstable yeah. and the more that you build on top of an unstable base the more things are going to become unstable the higher up you go so in your past your love was stable you felt loved you felt good you had people that did love you your stability your finances your just being able to feel like at home you felt very at home because your middle finger is your home is your stability and you felt good there you still have a lot of potential to make it, but in the back of your mind, you always feel like the direction that each of these talents is, is always a little shaken or a little bit obscure, and just, like, you don't know if all these different talents, your love, your stability, your communication, and your progress is ever going to be where you need it to be. In the past, you felt like it doesn't matter, because you have the strength to always overcome it. You still have the talent to overcome it, but just your direction of it is a little bit different now. Mm -hmm. So I guess one of the biggest things that I notice is that your stability and your progress are all waiting a little bit and it looks like you're looking for stability first and romantic love or love for yourself too before you feel like, okay, I know that I'm safe now. I know that I don't need to worry about happiness, food, uh, and progress and career because I found somebody that I can spend the rest of my life with and that can't complete me or complement me, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. So that's the back of the hands. Another thing too is that you have a good mix between talent and hard work. So oftentimes you see somebody that's just really naturally talented and they kind of don't care about hard work. It's because they have things given to them. Or sometimes it's the opposite where people are born kind of talentless and so they have to work hard to get everything. You have a good balance of working hard and also having a lot of good things work out for you if you continue to open up and there's just a few things that you, you get the opportunity to look for yourself to adjust and to strengthen up because your strength is good your abundance is good but your direction is always a little bit doubtful okay so can i have you flip your hands over now okay so as you can see from Brittany's lines her lines are very defined so it's mm -hmm. why well, she cut herself. <laughs> well, what that means is that a defined line often indicates that person is um, well. As we talked about earlier, whenever you reincarnate, you come to the earth for a purpose. And so you, for this lifetime, came to the earth for a very specific purpose. And every time you deviate from that purpose, the universe or God or source is going to help nudge you back into the line. So she fucked up that many times. <laughs> No, see, these are <laughs> these are her primary lines. So this is your love line, this is your career line, and this is your life line. So those are your three primary lines. You see how you have all these little tiny ones? Mm -hmm. That also indicates that you're a person who needs to travel a lot. And so you get to travel physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Mm -hmm. So for that physical travel, you get to go to like different locations, move around the world. But with that mental travel, explore different thoughts, philosophies, or read different books. Sorry about that. About Brady's palms, the lines are very defined. So that means that during the reincarnation process, she chose this life for a very specific reason. Sometimes people just kind of uh, free ball and just kind of go ahead and just live a normal right in life. But Brady came to this lifetime for a specific purpose. I don't know what that is, but the way that her lines are so deep and so uh, rich indicates that anytime she deviates from this path, Life and the universe and everything is going to help her nurture back onto the, to the pathway that she's looking for this time. But the things that we can't see for sure is that Brittany is a very loving and loyal person. She doesn't make 
Uh, she doesn't just date freely and casually and we're just with anybody. When she falls in love, she falls in love and that's that person. And she stays very loyal and true to them. And she almost goes through almost everything and anything to make sure that her relationship works out because it's very important for her to find somebody and to make it work out. Oftentimes with people, they want to, to imagine that as somebody to fix their life. But Brittany understands that love is not about having somebody come in to fill the most of your life. It's about working together and creating something together with them too. So whoever finds Brittany is going to be very lucky because she's going to make their life way better than what they have right now. And another thing is too, you, the type of relationships you would be really good at, Brittany, and I know a lot of girls are going to say that they like this too, but you might change and mold your partner a lot. So I noticed that a lot of girls try to change the guy that they get in a relationship with, but yours, you're not changing him because it's a pet peeve or it's because it's a pet project for you, but because you really have this insight and this knowledge of where they should be in life. And you have a lot of experience too, so you're like, I've been here before and I can see the pathway you're walking on. So, Try going this way because you really have their best intention in your heart. That's me. <laughs> That's me. And so, wow. Right? The interesting thing too is that there has almost always been a tempter in your relationship. Meaning that the relationships in your past, if you were ever in a relationship, you were focused in on one person. But there's always kind of been somebody else that wished that they would have asked you out first or really been with you and so they keep kind of bugging you every time you get into a relationship because <laughs> now they regret not making that first move and so in your past that's been kind of like a trend and in your future that's going to kind of be a trend too where the guy that had that opportunity he didn't take it in time he thought that he could just wait and have you anytime he wants but no you know what you want you take it and you go. So when you decide already, anybody that takes too long to uh, be proactive, they're gonna miss out on you. <laughs> <laughs> you was a hopeless romantic, basically, is what he's saying. It really is. Uh, so another thing too is that I drink for that. There's a there's a slight connection between the head and the heart. And so, this is your heart line, this is your headline or career line. And there's just like connection between them. So oftentimes that denotes a feeling of emotional trauma. And so that can actually become in the forms of anger, anxiety, depression. And it's also because you're very intelligent. And I see this a lot in very intelligent people. They try to overanalyze themselves, like they become their own therapist. But you can't always see your own problems, your own issues. You can't always self-diagnose. And so what you have to learn too, is I know you're very intelligent you can solve your problems logically. But when it comes to the problems of the emotion and of the heart, sometimes there is no logical solution. Sometimes you just have to let it go and just allow yourself to feel. Allow yourself, if you want to be angry one day, just go ahead and be angry. But be angry. I want to feel. There you go. And the important thing is, just make sure... I feel what I'm drinking. <laughs> you got that spirit in you. The important thing is just to make sure that you allow that openness, that emotion just to be emotion. Okay. Because I see that it's not in your past. So it's not something that's genetics for you. It's something that you're starting to observe from the environment. And so earlier we were talking about how every generation is starting to become more aware. And what that means too is that sometimes those feelings the reason why you can't solve it is because it's not yours. Sometimes it's the environment, sometimes it's other people. Sometimes you're sitting in a public place and you're like, why am I so angry right now? And you look around and you see a very angry person sitting next to you. You're like, am I feeling his feelings? And if you try to solve that logically, you're going to get more depressed because it doesn't make any sense. And it makes you feel worse, that it doesn't make any sense. Right. So just that Nothing makes sense. That makes so much sense. Nothing makes a goddamn <laughs> Because like a lot of times I'll be sitting somewhere I'm like, why am I crying? Yeah. What is going on? Crazy as the world, is it? And then I'll be just, I'll just start crying and I'll look around me and I'm like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> like, 
So that makes sense. Okay. See, but the, it makes you crazy. Right. The beautiful thing is though, humans we always can't sense emotions from one another. That's why we love watching romantic comedies. That's why we like watching dramas. I sense. love a good romantic comedy actually. Exactly, because we want to feel what they're feeling. And if their actors are really good, then we can feel it off of it too. It's mm -hmm. just you're getting to the point where it's not that healthy to get too much into that from random people. Okay. So that's your present. And the good thing too is that you have a lot of traveling to do. You have a lot of little lines that indicate that traveling will be really good for your career and good for your love life too. So you get to share stories, you get to go try new things with this other person. And life won't straight up just tell you, this is the answer to your problem. But it will give you the inspiration, the experience, and the wisdom. So that when you do reach that problem, you'll remember, oh by the way, this makes sense to me because I saw it in this aspect of my travel. And I saw it this way. Life never comes up to me and says, two times two equals four. I can tell you, oh hey, I learned two times two, and, or I learned three times three, so how do I figure out two times two? And that's not how I will teach you. The thing is too, you have a success line. So the success line is actually pretty rare, and not everybody has that. But you have I just want to be success. <laughs> so your success line is actually pretty long, meaning that the length of it indicates uh, the p maximum potential. So your maximum potential is very large. And the depth and the thickness of it represents the likeliness of it. So your potential is very long, but then your thickness is okay. So that means that you could become possibly celebrity or multi-millionaire, but the possibility of that it still requires you to work very hard for And it's some goddamn discipline in what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> so Intelligence wise, I can see that you're very intelligent, you're very smart, your career is actually very blessed, and you actually have a spiritual connection yourself. So, this is the side of spirituality, and you have a life connected here. Okay, so the thing is though, your potential for um, success is very high. The only thing is though, you have an indication on your hand stating that you have to be very careful financially. Because you can reach a high level of success, but you have a drain in your finances, which means no matter how much money you are making, you might spend it all or give it all away or some unfortunate incident can always occur to you. So you have a very bad luck when it comes to finances in your hands. Um, the best way to counteract that, especially with a very intelligent person like you, is that you can logically place it out and create a savings account, mutual funds, things that just are safe to keep your money in. And be aware that that sinkhole is always kind of there. And so one of the key points is that for your career, you're getting a lot of blessings from your spirit guides, from your guardian angels, or your answers, whichever you would like to give that at. However, your ability to understand and to hear and to receive from them is not quite uh, where it needs to be because they're speaking to you all the time. They're helping and working with you all the time. But so they bother her. They ain't bothering me. It's helping her. It's helping. But the thing is, it looks like it's having difficulty reaching into other aspects of your life because it it's not fully receiving it and you're not fully understanding what they're saying too. And one of the other key things is that you have very good natural health. So it's saying that genetically, you're very, very good set. You're going to have a very long life and you're going to have a lot of health. However, if you don't watch your own health, then you're going to have a lot of unnecessary uh, problems come into your way. So unnecessary meaning things like accidents, or getting hurt, or even unnecessary uh, diseases. Like I consider diabetes unnecessary. You can still overcome it, you're still gonna live a very long life, but being proactive and conscious about your own health too, helps you to overcome these things and to prevent them from ever happening. And I don't know if this is set on camera, but I was also saying that no matter how successful you become, you have to be careful because you have a financial kind of sinkhole in your hands, stating that all the money that comes into you, if you're not careful, if you're not uh, watching yourself, then all of that can come, can come and go. So just be careful with that. And also, it's very interesting, but you are a very loving and loyal person when it comes to romance. However, I see that 
you can have a potential of two different marriages. So that's up there. And <laughs> what? <laughs> potentially, it doesn't mean you're going to have to. Okay. That's a shame. <laughs> Okay, keep going. I'm sorry. And so, with children as well, it looks like uh, there's. So, I don't remember if you guys remember this, but I was saying at the beginning of the episode that oftentimes the people that we meet again are soulmates. So, soul friends, soul family. So, it's almost like children are family too. So, you have uh, people waiting for you to become born or here again as children. You have you gonna have some God keys for me, baby! There you go. It's I am soul kids. And there's about three of them potentially waiting. Three? I ain't. Wait, I'm say, wait, say this again. So there's three. I don't understand. Go ahead. You got three kids. Three kids. I'm gonna have three kids? There's three kids waiting for you. So you can have all of them come into this lifetime. Or. That pussy popping. So potentially up to three. Maybe more, maybe less. Some of them can all. Some of them can come. Or you can have, if you have more than three kids, kids soon come. If you have more than three kids, then those extras are potentially not so family. Exactly. They could just be like how I'm we're saying about overpopulation, and it's the other spirits being something down from us that weren't originally planning to be spirits, planning to be humans. Stop talking. No, I want to because I need the three. I need the three. Okay, there you go. All right. So, if you have more than three, then those can be just extras. Alright, so, any questions for me? Yes, you remember you were telling me about some healing uh, star oh, yeah. on my hand? So I can get my palm red. Is that still the case? Taking up all his time. So, I like to point out too, that with everybody's hands, everybody's palms, their lines do change. Okay. And so, everybody tends to think that change. Lines, yeah, it does. I have pictures of uh, different clients whose hands, because your right hand is your present and your non-dominant hand is your past. And you can see where their right hand, after a couple months, has now become the left hand and their right hand is now something completely different. It's pretty crazy. So my hand changed? Well, I see that there is a little bit of a star formation. But so it's it can not change your, your future? Because your future is always changing. Your life is always changing. At this moment right now, you may have had a different outlook on life now that you never had before. I've had different outlooks. Yeah. Right. And so that change, that helped deviate you from whatever current path that you're heading towards. So, different yellow brick roads. There we go. That was deep. That was deep. Alright, so. My turn! That was it? That's it. Oh, that was so interesting. <laughs> My turn. Energy's right, right. I mean, energy's good. I'm all good to go. Brittany, well, stop. your energy is strong, but remember how I was saying the concerning thing about your your palms on the backside of your hand is that your energies are unbalanced. They are all heading off to the wrong direction. So, so I know you're very intelligent, and so that gives you the opportunity to, to reevaluate your life and where you need to start going and communication and love and stability and then progress in that because you already know that the things you talk about people might not always understand so you get to learn how to speak up to a either lower or higher vibration because just because people don't understand it doesn't mean that you're not it can just be that you're too sophisticated for them and you're still just too intelligent so you need to learn how to also dumb down your speech yeah but also there's times where you need to also learn how to. This time adjust. she sound real dumb to me too. Though. Exactly. So sometimes you need actually real dumb. Some. Sometimes. That's <laughs> okay. Just joking. Okay. And uh, can I me. pee before I read my poem? Sure. We not reading your poem. And we're back. We're talking toasted. Right. So, right now we're reading Datachi, and you can see right away that the difference in this poem is that this is a little bit more balanced than. Uh, Brittany's, not that that's a bad thing, everybody's just unique and different, but the way that his palms are being read to, the way, the way that uh, his energy is saying, is that Tachachi has a really unique gift, or a really special gift in that he has an overabundance of health. 
and overabundance of energy. So that means that in different types of problems, typically he has the ability to compensate with that by just kind of busting through it and like working hard and just getting through any kind of obstacle by putting more energy into it by working hard. So a kind of an example I like to use for that for people is say that you have an exam the next day. A lot of people try to do an all-nighter to study all night, but by the next day they forget everything. With that Tachi, you can exchange your physical health for any kind of progress that you have in life. So you are one of those people that can do that all-nighter and still retain all that information. You can sort of force your way through using physical strength, physical energy, physical life force. So like Brittany, you're very good at communication. Am I? Yeah, but the thing is though, it looks like you're starting to grow a lot more. Oh, wait, are you right-handed or left-handed? I forgot to ask. I'm right-handed. Okay, good. So, with you being right-handed too, it also says that you have a little bit of luck and a little bit of blessings coming into your way. And so what that means is that the luck and the blessing is very small right now, but the more you give notice to it, the more you give appreciation to it, and then the more it's going to start to grow and snowball for you. So, it might start out from really small things like you're driving one day, and all of a sudden, the light is red, but right when you get to it, it turns green, and you're like, hey, you know, I don't have to stop. It's good luck. Yeah, just small little things like that. I feel lucky. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. So just give appreciation to those kind of things, and it's just going to start piling really large for you. Now, Tadashi, your support group, your family or friends, when was the last time you had an outing with you? It's actually been too long. Exactly. Because the way I see it is that both you and your support group, it can be family and or friends, you both are searching for one another. You guys haven't had the opportunity to mix your own energies, to mix your own life forces, to connect, to connect with one another once again. And so having that exchange is going to be both revitalizing and invigorating for you guys. So you, the information, the experiences that you guys have had individually up until this point, can really combine in an interdependent way to create kind of like this chemical reaction of new energy, new life, just spontaneously creating. Good busting. Good <laughs> busting. <too. laughs> All right, so I noticed that in your past, you're a little bit more closed off and everything. You're kind of open to love, but never really fully uh, emerging, immersing yourself in it. And in leadership, you had kind of this doubt about it. You always had a little bit of doubt of what you think to be true, what you think to be right, and where you're going with it. You were pretty certain, but if somebody was more certain, they could influence you, they could change what you're doing. You've come more into stability in your life, where even if somebody tells you something otherwise, you don't really care. You're gonna kinda go with your, what you wanna do anyway. <laughs> and not only do you become more centered, and strong in your belief, but you become more wiser and intelligent too. So it's not just because, you know, you're more confident now, but it's because you're starting to understand the world a little bit better and understand your place here and understanding the places of other people too. You can look at somebody and say, okay, my leadership skills have grown. I know that this person is a this kind of person. I know that their situation is this kind of situation. So they should do this. But you're not the imposing type of person. You're not going to go and like take over somebody's life. You're not going to be like, hey, I want you to do this, and I need you to do this and this and this. You're not bossy. If somebody needs advice, you let them come to you. You're more like the vice president than the president. You let them come to you to ask questions. Then you get your advice. You just don't jump over on them and shove your opinions on their things. All right? Wow. So, Go ahead and have me flip your hands up. How do you feel so far? Uh, in touch. <laughs> so, Daitachi, uh, your love life is a lot more serrated, it's a lot more diverse. Meaning that there's going to be a lot more relationships that you get to explore. In your past, it actually shows that you weren't that really interested in too many different relationships, so you kind of just let them come and go. But, the pathway for you to find your stability, and I want to say it's soulmate, but not everybody 
is actually has the traditional solving, excuse me. So for you, your pathway involves a lot more dating, a lot more going out, and a lot more experience with other people. So, no, experimenting as well. So, that's not a bad thing, it's just... It is when, when he's in a relationship. Or I was going to get to that point. It's just that when you do get to a relationship, it might be difficult. Because it looks like these experiences are still coming to you. And when you get into a stable relationship, so it's up to you to decide if you want to take these uh, scenic routes or if you want to stay on the main route of your relationship. Because you have the option. Not a lot of people have the option, like you do, of kind of leaving the main relationship and then kind of coming back. I'm not saying for you to do that all the time, but you have, <laughs> you have a few different, uh, I don't know, I guess it's redemption paths, I guess. Yeah. So it's like, you get with this main person and you kind of know that they're the main person for you. But then you guys break up, and when you're in your your break, then you go and like date somebody for a little bit here and there. And then when you want to get back together with your main source, then you go back together with them too. I don't really suggest it because I'm more of a, a loyal person too, where I want to just stick with one person. And you do have that option. You have kind of to stick with one person. It's just I choose me. <laughs> It's just a lot of people are, are interested in too in their own life. So uh, there's a few things to be careful of because there's somebody who wants who likes your energy but doesn't like the way you think. So they're gonna want to change who you are. So they want all the benefits and none of the downside. So they're gonna want to change who you are, but then they're gonna dislike who they're trying to change you into. So you have to keep strong enough. Not allow that person to change your own too. The second person in your life is somebody that relies on you a lot, that becomes dependent on you. So this relationship is going to be somebody that comes into your life and they might need a lot of financial stability. They might need a lot of, well, they might need to like live with you. So this person you have to be careful about too because they start off needing you, but when they don't need you anymore, it looks like they leave you. Some relationships that start off, being kind of needy, you end up working out too because you are on a more advanced pathway, you're more mature, and so they're just kind of a few years behind, but they can catch up to you. This realm that is behind is going to use you and then leave you. So oh, this one you have to be careful of too. Stay away. And so one thing is you do have a connection from the spiritual side into your love line. So that actually does denote the soulmate connection. Now, the weird thing about what I've been seeing a lot is a lot of different soulmates have actually been breaking up for the last couple, well, for the last couple years. It's kind of strange. So your soulmate connection can indicate that you have um, good intentions from the other person, but not necessarily mean that you're going to be with them. They can just set a good partner for you and say, this lifetime, I'm not going to be that good for you, but here's somebody that will be with you. So take this person in my place. I'm not saying that's going to be your case, but potentially that's where it could be for you too. Now, the crazy thing is, you have both the success line and your career line is really insanely long. So that means that either you're going to be very successful or you're and or you're very, very intelligent, past the point of which normal people even understand. So people tend to think that genius is what you see in TV and media where it's like only Einstein. But you have the potential to actually be a genius in your own right, it's just in an undiscovered way. Also, whatever field you invest your time and your riches into, you're going to advance it to a point to which human or Human current knowledge doesn't have an understanding. So you're going to push the boundaries of knowledge. We're about to be YouTube stars, okay? Because we both got long life. Where are you going? Okay. Where would it? So mm -hmm. you can actually push the knowledge of what we have right now. Oh, that's a problem. like I'm about to be a revolutionary. Yeah. I need to go. Like dead ass. Right. 
So that potential is there. The only downside is that you have a deviation from that long curve line. So uh, to take an early ex early exit because it looks like you still will get to a very high uh, career point but there will come a point at which you decide this is a good point to stop or the return on investment is not going to be as good but you're still further than that, uh, that fear. Does that make sense? really does, actually. Okay. <laughs> so it's like, you can stop now, this would be a good point, because you're getting a lot of uh, a lot of rewards for the amount of input you put in, you're getting a lot back. But you're going to reach a point which is like, okay, so I'm not getting as much back anymore, but the, the goal, the finish line is a lot further, and you get to help everybody else out by receiving less per input. And so, with your career, it does look like you're an indecisive person. <laughs> so you're indecisive. So what that means is that it'd be really good to find a partner, or not even like a romantic partner, but somebody that you really trust, like an accountability partner, that can help you to start and to set your goals and to push you to go ahead and start. It's not like that. Right. I need that. And you see how this actually connects back to your romance earlier, how there's that person that you have to be aware of that's going to try to change your thoughts, change who you are. Because they're going to be more of a A-type person who pushes you, who changes you. So at first, it will be good for you because it helps you to get started on things. But be careful because they will start to change everything about you. So you need somebody who can help you to begin to, but make sure that they make you begin on your own goals, on your own, your own path. It's not their plans for your life. So, that's what's going on. And also, you have a good passion that you should bring into your uh, love life too. So, any kind of hobbies, any kind of events, activities, make sure that you incorporate that person into all the different activities in your life because that will help you to explain any kind of things. Whenever you get into an argument, whenever you get into a fight, sometimes you guys don't see it from the same angle. But if you guys are in the same circles of hobbies, of friends, sometimes they can explain for you in a way, in the middle ground so that both of you guys can see it from the same angle, the same view. So you have a romance that is a lot more involved into your lifestyle than just, this is love, this is my love life, this is my business life, and keep it the same. Yours is going to be a lot more in, uh, interwoven with one another. So build that life upon it that way. All right? And let's see. So your career is actually a lot more uh, well, all over the place, if you want to put it that way, in the past. I'm all over the place. But the good thing is it looks like you found more of your stride now. You're heading towards a good path. Whatever it is you're doing now, I don't know what you're doing right now because I just met you. You too. Yeah. <laughs> Among other things. Anyways. But you're on a very good path there right now. And earlier you were telling me uh, that you have a very natural gift to sense other people's emotions. The reason of because of that is you actually have a special symbol on your hand that indicates an intuitive gift, especially an emotional ability to feel other people's feelings. So it's doubly as important for you to learn how to control uh, and how to create a barrier of energy around yourself so you don't always feel people's emotions because you have an natural gift to feel you can be a healer. So the M on your hand indicates that. And see, you kind of have one too, but it's not as easy to see. Okay, I'm almost there. Well, you're pretty close too. <laughs> so that indicates and any kind of tour to give, any kind of energy work, you'd be really better. So I don't know if you know about Reiki healing. Do you know about Reiki healing? Reiki healing is the ability to uh, use yourself. So basically, you're one of those people, you're one of the generation that's coming to that one more special awakening, and so you have to learn how to control your energy, control your, your barriers and help uh, heal the world. So lastly, the reason, one of the reasons why I wanted to become a psychic was so that I can help teach people how to use their energy and even just be aware of it. Like, I know that you have your own gifts too. So I do? Yeah, with that energy sensing I was showing you. I don't like it. And see, the cool thing is that you actually 
are becoming stronger on with it uh, subconsciously because you see how in your past hand it's not quite there but you see in your present hand your future it's growing stronger all right so do you have any questions for me about your poems um i have anxiety why anxiety because anxiety often comes from the mind and from the heart so you see how your heart mind is very unstable so that means that your emotions you're receiving so many different impulses all the time but your mind is also distracted too which is not focused so it's hard for you to catch any kind of thread of your emotions and to kind of find the source of them and heal Brittany would actually be a really good person for you because she's so focused so she's actually a really good person to help focus your emotions too you guys are really, really complimentary to one another <laughs> and so with that well. that can also be part of your anxiety uh, embrace your own fears and find somebody that can push you because your anxiety is keeping you back from starting but once you get going I see that once you get going you ain't no stopping you boo exactly your momentum is really good <laughs> cool cool all right well, well my arms are <laughs> I don't know like I could like we really have to have him back because this is a great episode of talking toasted I really enjoyed Definitely. myself I, I'm, I hope y'all enjoyed yourselves I hope you had your drink we had Rocky Rocky Ro yay I was gonna say we had him drinking so I hope that you were drinking <laughs> and he was reading our poems so anyway I just enjoyed Rocky yeah. I you have to come back. You have to. I'm definitely be happy to come back anytime guys and just feel free to invite me over. Thank uh, you. And for everybody else too, feel free to check out my website. Yeah, I was gonna say tell them again. Tell them tell the people. <laughs> Alright, so them. website is Rocky's Psychic Reading. Uh, uh, How do you com. spell spell it out? Spell it out, let them know. Alright, Rocky, so R O C K Y S and then psychic reading dot com. You can read my blogs up there. And so I was actually writing a current blog about the overpopulation of the world and how the spirits now, uh, the next generation, is coming into a lot of depression. And that blog is called The Lonely God because a lot of our spirits are of that higher vibration, but we don't know how to exist here. So go ahead and check out that blog. Send me any emails, any requests. Sign up for any readings. And uh, as special uh, guests or in special customers, uh, email me too, and I'll give you a discount on your first reading. Hey! Talk and Toast It. Make sure hey, you let them know you're from Talk and drink. Toast It. And you can get your discount. How much of a discount are you going to get with Rocky? All right. So it'll be a $10 discount. $10? All right. Let me tell you, I really appreciate you coming on. I really appreciate you working. Okay. Yeah, he well, he threw it back. Oh. All right. So Sorry. he's no longer Talk and Toast It. He's Toast It. So um, anyway, Rocky, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for reading our poems. You have to come back. <laughs> I'd love seriously. to come back, guys. Seriously, like this was great. Halloween it's been special. great. great. Halloween ain't too far. And and uh, is there anything you'd like to say before we close out? Uh, no, just thank you guys for inviting me out here and having this great interview. It's always really fun, and I love hanging out with everybody. And so yeah. Yay. If anybody has any questions, just feel free to email me. The reason why I became a psychic is so that I can help the world. I can help people. Yes. I'm oh. loving it. Yes. And we're talking toasted. We're talking toasted. Oh, his glass is empty, <laughs> so he's toasted. And we two shots in. Feeling ourselves. Good night, y'all. Have a good one. Have a good night. Like every time we work it out, the vision comes and then we fall. We fall. And the deeper that we are in love, the more you try to find to give your all. But you can't, you, you can't. But I don't have the heart to let go. Cause what we have is something special. Said that we 